Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Lang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We're healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome. A reminder that this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Our intention for today's podcast is to normalize that you, dear listener, might be suffering right now. Hopefully that you'll discover acknowledging that you're not okay in this particular moment is an act of mindfulness. And acknowledging that you are not okay can also be a beacon of light. We hope that you will take away that if you are not okay, for any reason at all, you are not alone in feeling this way. So many of us as humans often feel not okay. And there are both internal and external resources you can utilize right now to ease your struggle. And so what does it mean to be okay? And what does it mean to not be okay? With the threat of the Delta variant and increased numbers of people being infected with COVID-19, there's been a heightened stress and anxiety level for those, especially in the healing professions. It seems all too familiar, like we were here less than a year ago at the height of the pandemic, just this last winter. And it seems like we're headed that way again, maybe even sooner. But in actuality, the pandemic, while it's surging again, it's actually not amongst the vaccinated, but amongst the unvaccinated. The reality is that right now, the vast majority of COVID-19 infected persons are unvaccinated. And frankly, as a frontline pulmonologist, I'm angry, I'm tired, I'm frustrated. And I invite you as well, dear listener, to pause and name what you are feeling because we know that naming emotions, especially difficult ones that we're experiencing, that we're experiencing can actually disarm the amygdala and soften the edges of difficulty. And that's where the power lies in naming the discomfort and the anger and the frustration. We so often want to resist it and we want it to go away. And we make it mean things also that they're, um, that maybe it doesn't and using it just as a way to allow ourselves to feel exactly what we feel in the moment can be, I love this, disarm the amygdala and soften the edges of what we feel in our circumstances. And I think also to know that there is a piece just of human compassion that when we bear witness to others suffering, no matter where it came from, that that in and of itself is hard. And so there's this sort of double layer of suffering all around. And I think uh, another layer uh, I'm noticing also in teens and kids and um, is that we, people felt so close to going back to, back to school and back to the worlds that they knew. And now there's this threat of things potentially being taken away again. And that, that having people once again feel not okay and the stress of that. So we wanted to share some mindful strategies for when you are not feeling okay. Because when we're not feeling okay, we often don't see solutions and possibilities. We feel stuck. And we are overwhelmed by feelings such as being out of control or feeling uncertain and um, potentially health or our own mental health struggles. And that when we feel not okay, solutions are often not readily available or front and center in our minds. So the strategies that we're gonna talk about here today come from within. 
but we also want to be clear that there is support out there outside of you that is not within and you 100% should reach out for help if you feel that that would be needed. And we can talk a bit about being mindful of getting help and some of the brain conversations that perhaps we have when we approach that. But for today, know that there are strategies from within and strategies outside of you that can be helpful in this moment when you're not feeling okay. So the first tip to share is an old favorite, which is to pause and be present. And to pause and be present with whatever is in this moment, even if it doesn't feel good. And to be still and to listen, listen to your heart and to breathe, breathe deeply and pause and just allow yourself to be and to slow down and to settle. Another tip is this aspect of curiosity. So bringing a lens of curiosity inwards, going through naming what it is that you actually are feeling both in the way of body sensations and also emotions. There's an adage in psychology that when you name an emotion, you can tame it, but also you can claim it as well. And when we claim things, it gives us back a bit of agency and power in a situation where we may not have much control. And that's, I think, the real beautiful thing about this word, claiming it. So the third strategy to offer in this moment is acceptance, an old familiar one in mindfulness. I like to refer to it as accepting and allowing and allowing all that you feel in this moment, whether it be anger, rage, sadness, resentment, and allowing yourself to be frustrated if that's what you feel without judgment of yourself for feeling a certain way. Many of us were trained as healers to be so altruistic and empathetic. And then when we find ourselves frustrated or angry in a situation, we uh, double the impact of it by being angry at ourselves for feeling that way. And so accepting and allowing whatever it is that you might feel. We are all human and it is human to feel both bad and good and to suffer and to feel burnt out and exhausted and have limitations. And so to not feel less than if this moment in time feels overwhelming and exhausted and you feel like you need a break, that is part of being human. It's okay to not always be stoic and not always be tough. And when we allow all of those feelings, they can soften. So another adage is what you resist persists. So if you resist your current circumstance, your current state of mind, body sensations, emotions, for instance, then there's a likelihood that it will persist. However, if you allow it all in the particular moment and you give yourself permission to actually feel it, then you can give yourself a chance to heal it. So what you feel, you can heal. The next strategy to offer is accepting but not liking. This is one of my favorites. When things are happening in the world that we don't like, that we cannot change. And so when things are outside of our control, we can opt to accept them, knowing that there is not really another option and resistance leads us down a path that we would rather not choose, but instead that we get to not like them. And that's where our agency comes. And for me, when I get to not like it, it also creates some spaciousness rather than feeling oppressed, I feel that there is something that I can do within me to help me. And that spaciousness allows you to breathe a little bit more deeply and to focus on moving forward with intention. And we often talk here in this podcast about the space between the stimulus and the response, and that being where your power is. And 
accepting but not liking lengthens that space and makes it a little bigger and makes it a little more visible. And in that space is where you can choose how you want to move forward. This is a good spot to also interject the uncertainty of the current state of the world um, in that you can accept the uncertainty because it's already here, but you don't necessarily have to like the uncertainty. So allowing and accepting the uncertainty because it's already here can help you become more comfortable with the discomfort of uncertainty. And there's something that comes up in coaching a lot, which is funny about uncertainty, which is acknowledging and accepting and allowing that you do not like uncertainty actually makes it feel better. So just knowing that you are a person for whom uncertainty is not comfortable and you don't like it. Some people actually like uncertainty because they see uncertainty as possibilities or opportunities ahead, but others do not. And so just realizing that we're all different and acknowledging who you are and what works for you can be really powerful. So moving forward with intention, a couple of strategies here that we have spoken about, but will work so powerfully in this moment and in any moment when you are not feeling okay. It's always an option to nourish yourself and to give yourself some space to heal yourself. And knowing what nourishes you, whether it's friends and community or being alone, and whether it's sleep or healthy food or mindfulness or running an ultra long distance, whatever it is that happens to be nourishing for you, fill yourself up with nourishment in whatever pocket or nook and cranny is available in your life knowing that it may seem like it's not possible, but sometimes even clean sheets can be an answer or picking up some flowers or adding them to your grocery order or um, whatever it might be that really does feel nourishing to you, nourishing yourself when you feel not okay, rather than waiting for someone else to do it can have a powerful impact. The other thing is to decide that you don't have to be miserable. The situation may be bad and may be extremely difficult, but we get to show up for it in whatever way we choose. And I was reminded in preparing for this of the thought that Rhonda McGee shared that it's our call to experience joy even as we work for better. And she talks about this in light of um, racism and racial tension, but that here in this moment, we can still try to find pockets of joy or pockets of lightness, even when we feel not okay. And not that you have to, but that if it seems available, sometimes we get so focused on the negative experience that we can't pop out of it. And we might miss the joy of a toddler or the joy of the music right in front of us. And knowing that that It's perfectly allowed to allow yourself some moments of joy to nourish and heal yourself as well. So this is an act of self-compassion, the idea of nourishing yourself and, and asking yourself the question of what is it that I need in this moment? That's a beautiful question. What is it that I need? What would help me? What would feel good? Whatever way of asking it, it feels good to you should be the way to ask it. But even practicing that when you are feeling okay and practicing noticing what you need, I notice that I, it takes a lot of practice for me to pause and notice and be able to tap into what I need and what that might look like and feel like. And it might look and feel very different than you think it should. And so just allowing yourself to need or to want whatever it is that you need or want without judgment. So asking good questions is the next tip. And we should add the first question, which is what is it I need in this moment? And then other questions that I find helpful in really difficult situations is what would peace do? Or what would compassion do? And these would be peace for you first and foremost, and then peace for whoever else you are sharing a house with, a space with, a um, 
career, a job with, um, even with your patients. And then what would patients do? Knowing that sometimes we can't fix things in the moment. Or what would my future self suggest I do in this moment? When a year from now, hopefully things look different, what will I wish I had done to show up for this moment? That often opens up a spaciousness and possibilities that your brain can't really see when it feels not okay. And then another few that popped up to mind here is what would good health do? Because everyone listening to this podcast, I imagine is committing to good health for themselves and for others. And so what would health do? And then because we are as healers trained to have a bit of a negativity bias and look for things that are wrong, what might turn out better than I expect? Because we look at as COVID and this pandemic starts to pick up again, we go to worst case scenarios. And so what if it's not the worst case scenario, but that things actually turn out better than we expect? Because we might as well focus on that as we're moving through it. It doesn't hurt. So I want to spend a little bit of time talking about that because it's so natural for us to catastrophize. We were trained to do that on behalf of our patients. And so in this circumstance of the uncertainty of the future of the pandemic, it's only natural also because we've lived through January of 2021 and it's all too fresh in our minds that it's natural to think that we might know what will happen with the remaining months of this year. But in actuality, could we have hope and also allow and accept that what's different now about the uncertainty we're facing is that vaccinations are newly introduced into the equation. And so it very well may be that in a couple of months time, the circumstances of the hospitals being overfilled and very sick patients rounding in tents might not be a reality. But of course, we're still afraid of all of that reality because we just came out of it. And so I just wanted to call that out and normalize the catastrophizing as appropriate for what we're going through in the situation. I think it is appropriate. And then to ask yourself the question, is it serving me? Knowing that where we are right now is difficult and many people in healthcare are exhausted and burnt out. And so just to decide, like, do I want to keep thinking about that or do I want to keep thinking about something else? So when it pops up, have compassion and kindness and non-judgment, which is what you are getting at, because of course you think that way. We've been through a lot in the last year and a half. And What are some other possibilities? And then I wanted to share a thought that has come up with my work with this particular ER doc, but I have found it over the last two weeks to be incredibly helpful for people working in all kinds of different circumstances in healthcare, which is that it should be different, but you can still make a difference. So it's a bit like accepting and not liking, but more specific. And so we would like to be in a different scenario and in this moment, but we can still make a difference. And there are lots of different ways to make a difference, whether it's nourishing yourself, practicing mindfulness, whether it's getting support, calling a friend, joining a community such as the Mindful Healthcare Collective, that is making a difference for yourself. But even if circumstances should be different in the hospital, for example, we can still make a difference. We often focus on how we feel that we can't make a difference and the areas in which we can't do anything and where we're feeling ineffective and to remember that we can still make a difference. And I wanted to highlight also that the um, cynicism and 
the feeling ineffectual is part of burnout and they are the classical <laughs> symptoms of burnout. And so sometimes it feels so, so 100% true. And just to soften around the fact that that may be burnout speaking. And that's why it's hard to see some of the ways in which you can make a difference. So having compassion and kindness for yourself around that and also offering up your brain some other options of thoughts can be really helpful. We hope that those tips are a starting point, but also a reminder to get additional help if you need it. You don't have to solve everything yourself. There's no merit badge for not getting help. And that working with a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a coach or calling the 24 hour support line, all of those are also options. And realizing that everyone needs help along the way. And those people who perform at a super high level, like professional athletes, they all have help. They actually have help in almost all of those categories I just mentioned and more. And so it's not a sign of weakness to get help. It's a sign of strength. And so whether this podcast offers enough help or you want to get help from a community or different individuals that might be able to be of help, remember that help is out there and that you are not alone in feeling this way. And there's no shame or blame in feeling not okay, that um, it happens to everyone at different points. And we've never lived through a pandemic before, and we've never lived through an ongoing pandemic. And each moment here in this pandemic offers new learnings and new explorations. And each and every one of us, I think, has reached points where we have not felt okay. So coming together in community around not feeling okay is the first step in moving forward with intention. One thought that came to mind just now as you were telling us about these different options for additional help if you need it was to also give yourself permission to take some time off. Like even if it's unexpected time off, knowing that giving yourself permission to nurture yourself, particularly if it means taking a bit of time off, should also be a readily available option for you should you choose it. And I just want to normalize that many, many people are finding themselves in a place where they really, truly do need some space and some time off so that you would not be alone. And that we often have judgments about it being a failing to take time off. But once again, what if that were a strength to take time off? And what if it were a gift in the sense that you, with a little bit of space and rest, were able to continue practicing as an exceptional human and healthcare provider. And then if that's what you need, why wouldn't you take it? And if you had a friend who were coming to you with the same feelings that you were having in this moment, what would you tell them? Because we often treat ourselves much more harshly and judge ourselves much more harshly than we would others. So if a colleague came to you telling you how they felt, what advice would you give them? Or a friend or family member, what advice would you give them? And can you offer yourself the same permission and the same level of compassion and kindness? I also wanted to share a relatively quick acronym that all of you can use in moments of difficult circumstances. And we've shared it before. It's the RAIN acronym. And the RAIN acronym kind of summarizes everything that we've just talked about in terms of working through difficult situations. So R stands for recognizing, recognizing that the circumstance that you're in, that you're feeling is difficult and it's causing discomfort, stress, anger, fear, whatever it is that might be uncomfortable for you in that particular moment. A is for allowing, as we had talked about, allowing the situation and the circumstance to be here just as it is in this particular moment because it's already here. 
And then I is to bring in that curiosity. So investigating, I for investigating, investigating, being curious about what's happening internally, naming your emotions, body sensations, perhaps even thinking about the thoughts that you're having about their circumstances in a way that's a bit more objective, such as watching those thoughts like they're clouds passing through a sky or leaves drifting down a stream, as opposed to getting entangled and over-identified with distressing thoughts. You can choose to have that type of relationship with them. And then N is to remind yourself that whatever's happening is most likely not a personal attack on your identity or your humanity, even though sometimes in the moment, it might feel like it is. It might be reflective of prior similar circumstances and be predictive of similar circumstances that might arise in the future as well. And N is also an opportunity for taking some time to ask yourself, what can I do to nurture myself in this moment? So hopefully that acronym and the reminder of this acronym is helpful for you. I wanted to just um, reflect on the idea that today, I think we've repeated a lot of previous tips and concepts and thoughts. And I love this concept that what you repeat gets remembered. We often think I've heard, heard that before. Is it helpful? And what you repeat gets remembered. And then the secondary piece of that, what you practice grows. And so we practice saying it, others practice doing it, and things begin to grow and become new habits. And then the last piece to add is subtle is significant. And so each little small shift, even if you feel so not okay, everything seems impossible. If you could just try out one thing that we've mentioned today, as a subtle shift, the impact may truly be significant. So as always, we'd like to close our podcast with some reflection questions. How do you feel being not okay? So this is an invitation for you to get curious again with your experience of not being okay. What are some of the thoughts that you have about the state of not okayness. Can you give yourself permission for this moment to not be okay? What if you asked for help in working through the difficulty? What might that look like for you? If you're in crisis or in a state of overwhelm, please reach out to your loved ones and mental health professionals. The Physician Support Line at 1-888-409-0141 or at physiciansupportline.com is available, along with a listing of resources on their website. We also welcome healthcare professionals to join us in community at the Mindful Healthcare Collective. We have a Facebook group that will post a link in the comments um, in our show notes, and you can sign up for emails of the listing of free wellness offerings we offer at mindfulhealthcarecollective.com. I invite you to join us for Mindful Yoga and some of our other sessions in the Mindful Healthcare Collective, many of which we practice some of these tools and what you practice grows stronger. And also acknowledging that the power of community and practicing, whether it be mindfulness, medicine, um, healing, nurturing, nourishing in community can be quite powerful. Please stay on after the sound of the bowl for a mindful moment offering. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share, follow, leave us stars and reviews. We thank you. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present and start truly living your one wild and precious life, come find us at the Mindful Healers Podcast. Com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. Discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at themindfulhealerspodcast.com.
reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. Welcome to today's mindful moment. It's okay to not be okay. Take in a deep breath through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. And just allow yourself to notice how you feel in this moment. If you discover that you feel not okay, just allow it. Take in another deep inhale through your nose and an exhale through your mouth. And as usual, notice your sit bones if you happen to be sitting and ground them into your seat beneath you. If you're standing, notice your feet upon the earth. Stand tall. Grow your spine towards the sky. Stack each vertebrae upon each other. Reach the crown of your head towards the sky and drop your shoulders. Take in another deep inhale in through your mouth and out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Noticing the breath. Once again, in through your nose, and this time out through your nose. Take a pause here, come back to your normal breathing, and allow your body to rest. And notice how you feel. Do you feel any tingling in your hands or your feet? Close your eyes if it's safe for you to do so. And bring your left hand to your heart and your right hand atop. And take a moment once again to notice how you feel in this moment. In this moment of COVID increasing, different variants, people struggling, lots of different opinions, Tragedy across the world, tragedy with wildfires at home. Notice if you feel angry. Notice if you're resentful, perhaps frustrated. Do things feel out of control? See if you can describe whatever the feeling is that you feel. And take in another inhale. And an exhale, see if you can loosen the feeling. You are human. Whatever you feel in difficult situations is allowed. Allow it as it is, all of it. Notice if you are resisting it. What are you resisting? See if you can name it. And then see if you can just let go of your resistance. Your resistance, perhaps, to how it should be, but it's not. To what other people should do or think, but are not. And if you're sad, allow the sadness. If you're angry, allow the anger, all of it. When you don't resist, your journey will be more easeful. Take in another deep breath into your chest, filling yourself up with nourishing breath. Exhale, let it go. Breathe in to the count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold for four. One, two, three, four. Breathe out for four. One, 
two, three, four. Pause for four. One, two, three, four. Come back to your normal breathing pattern. Press the heel of your left hand into your heart and press your right hand gently into the left hand atop. Send yourself some kindness and compassion for whatever you might feel in this moment. And notice what might happen if you stop struggling. As Mark Nepo says, when you stop struggling, you float. Could you allow yourself to flip over onto your back in these somewhat stormy seas or very stormy seas, depending on where you are and who you are, and allow yourself to float for a little bit, to rest, to heal, to recover. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Take another moment here, hand to heart, pausing, being present. A moment of pause for you. And when you're ready, slowly lower your hands to your thighs and open your eyes and let the light in. Thank you all so much for practicing with me today. We'll see you next week.